We don't say it's a cult because we think it doesn't work. We know it works. And that's the problem. You will always be enslaved to that specific sin. If you haven't had a drink in 50 years, you're still identified with that sin. And not even God can change it. Not even God can change the fact that you're an alcoholic. That, my friends, is an idolatrous, false religion, and it needs to be identified as such. Faith is resistance. Now, these are harsh words, I understand, but I pray that you'll hang on and hear me out, because I know it's not going to be well received by some. So please understand that this message is being given in love, and my prayer is that it will be received in the intention in which it is being given. This is not an attack. We have experience here. My wife, Summer, has specifically been affected by the cult of Alcoholics Anonymous by essentially losing contact with her family. However, we're not offering a critique of the program because we're mad at it. We don't say it's a cult because we think it doesn't work. We know it works. And that's the problem. AA is effective as a cult in that it creates lifelong slaves to the program rather than slaves to Christ Jesus. The program gets the glory that belongs to Christ. Within AA, any God is good enough as long as that God is bigger than you and it's not you. The same thing could be said for Mormonism or Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, no doubt there have been alcoholics and addicts who responded to Mormon or Jehovah's Witness evangelists, became a part of their recovery program, and overcame their addiction. No doubt that's happened. Does that mean that Mormonism or the Watchtower is the truth? No. No. Because they also meet the basic qualifications for being deemed a cult. Why AA is a problem is because it is a lifestyle religion. I encourage you to visit armoroftruth.net and check out that, that link that we have for you there. To the episode of Apologia Radio that we've provided there. Pastor Jeff Durbin of Apologia Church, another one with a background of addiction, recovery, and then working directly with others in treatment as a pastor in a treatment center, he gives a much better description of why AA is a false religion in that it makes disciples for AA rather than it being some kind of nonpartisan, neutral program for overcoming addiction. Friends, there is no such thing as nonpartisan. There's no such thing as neutrality. You're serving something. So when you hear those words from anyone, be on alert. Everyone has a worldview, and neutrality is a myth. You might say to me, though, but why are you being so harsh? Why don't you just leave it alone, man? AA is not infringing, infringing on the church. It's just helping people to overcome their addictions, to live a better life. Any movement that claims to have the truth and the only way to success over any sin and also mitigates the sufficiency of Scripture with its own sacred texts that are designed to be the standard of your life, well, these things must be held up to the light of Scripture and analyzed very closely. Now, some of you out there may have already discerned the major problem of AA. You might be able to see how AA addresses sins directly without calling them sins. They deem it a disease without giving a proper diagnosis, and then they offer a completely enslaving prognosis. You will be diseased forever. You will always be an alcoholic, an addict, etc. Two major problems here. What about the sin of narcissism? What about the sin of, li a sin of lying? What about the sin of anger? What about basic idolatry? Are those sins addressed? There's no hope of ever overcoming your condition as a sinner within AA. You will always be enslaved to that specific sin. If you haven't had a drink in 50 years, you're still identified with that sin. And not even God can change it. Not even God can change the fact that you're an alcoholic. 
That, my friends, is an idolatrous, false religion, and it needs to be identified as such. God has been setting addicts free from their sin since the fall of man. He hasn't lost his power or forgotten about drunks. He doesn't need the AA big book to help him bring his children to the light. Just another analogy for you. Let's just say a drunk joins the Church of Scientology. Who's going to argue with me that that is an obvious, dangerous, new age cult? But he joins the Church of Scientology. And that man gets sober and stays sober. Do we then begin a crusade to defend Scientology because it saved John Q from alcoholism? John Q was dying. He, was, he would have been dead without Scientology. Therefore, Scientology should be defended as the truth? Of course not. We honor Christ as Lord of all areas of our lives. When you are in Christ, you're still a sinner. But you're no longer identified as a sinner before God. Your sins are removed from you as far as the east is from the west. You're justified, forever identified with Christ. That's your identity. You're not an alcoholic forever. You're a Christian. You belong to Jesus. That's your identity. Let me say also these two things about this topic. First of all, the Celebrate Recovery Program that you see so many churches across the country it's no better. Pulling out Bible verses and pulling them out of context and attaching them to the 12 steps of AA, that's, that's no answer. Please watch the video we've linked for you at armoroftruth.net for more information on that. Secondly, I want to explain my wife's personal experience of being delivered from her bondage to the sin of addiction in the year of 2018. It's her testimony. She was delivered through the sovereign grace of our Lord and God alone. Now, I'm with her every single day, and I bear personal testimony that she is free from that bondage. Please understand this. Nobody is saved from a life of sin by anything other than the work Jesus Christ completed on the cross. What did Jesus say? It is finished. It has been paid. Your debt is clear. That means all your past and future sins are covered when you're in Christ. Read Romans chapter 8 if you have questions about that. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. My wife Summer lost her natural father to alcoholism. Other family members too. The family wrecked by addiction and alcoholism and experienced the lifestyle that is alcoholism and mental neglect from her own parents. And to this day, that family who was working the program, the people she has left, will not communicate with her because she's not working the program. Why? Because it's too much of a risk to their sobriety, to commiserate or even communicate with a person who is not a member in good standing of the Church of Alcoholics Anonymous. Now that isn't just cult-like, my friends. That is one of the defining characteristics of a cult. So whenever a lifestyle self-help program determines for you, that it is unsafe for you to communicate with and express love directly to your own child, you are firmly in the clutches of a cult and nothing else. A cult that can save you from alcoholism, but it will not save you from yourself. Eventually, at some point after the meetings are over, after you've denied everyone who's not in the program, after your sponsor is not available, after your husband or wife has died, and you're lying there in your bed at night all alone, at some point, you're going to realize that you had an idol, and that idol was insufficient. You're going to realize that it wasn't worth it. To win your battle against alcoholism was not worth forsaking Jesus Christ. Your idol can't talk to you. The big book's not going to help. 
Your idol cannot save you from the hard truth that you have forsaken Christ. You've forsaken Christ as Lord, and now you find yourself alone, sober, but all alone in all the other sins that AA can't wash away. Now that's hard talk. That's tough teaching. I know. But here's the good news. God knows who you are, and you're not hiding from Him. And you can know for sure that no one's going to get injustice. By grace, you are saved through faith, which is not because of anything you did or could do. It's the free gift of a holy, wrathful, and merciful God. And that is so that no one, so that none of you may boast about his special way to victory or sobriety that was outside of the Bible. There is one way to the Father. Our Lord and God came into the world as a man, Jesus of Nazareth. He lived a perfect life according to the law, taught and prepared men to carry the message of the new covenant to all the world. He gave his life willingly to perhaps the most brutal and humiliating form of capital punishment available in the Roman Empire. But God's cup of wrath, that is death, couldn't hold him. And on the third day, he rose from the dead and left that tomb vacant. And in doing so, he fulfilled the law, making the keeping of the law obsolete. In Matthew 28, Jesus in his resurrected body gives his followers their command, which is our command today. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And then he gives this comfort. And behold, and look, pay attention, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You're not alone. So if you're watching this, and you're experiencing conviction in your heart, if these words are getting through to you, if you know that these words mean something very important, then I want to suggest that God is effectually calling you right now. That means He's calling you, and you're going to respond. You were dead in your sins, just like the rest of the world. It's appointed once for us all to die. And then comes the judgment. Now, what's it going to be for you? Mercy or justice? If these words make sense to you, then you already realize that you need that mercy. Are you prepared for that moment? There's only one way. There's not God's way and AA. There's one way. If what I'm saying is piercing your heart right now, then just give it all to Christ right now. Give Him your addictions. Give Him your lying. Give Him your coveting. Give Him your inability to overcome lust and desire for more and more of what the world offers. If you're lost in addiction right now, and these words are getting through to you, if you know that your Creator is calling you and give it all to him. You have no power. You have no power. How about that for an evangelism? How about that for a message? You have no power. That's what the cross means. What you were powerless to do, Jesus has already done. It means that you were dead. But God, being rich in mercy, has restored you to life and seated you with Christ. And what a miracle the gospel is. The gospel is the power. Not any other program. Nothing can come alongside the gospel and make it more complete. 
Is this making sense to you? It's these words, not me, not the pages of the Bible, but the words that God has given us in Scripture. It's the public preaching of the gospel. That is the power that changes hearts and nothing else. If you know something has just changed in your heart, just please reach out to us, email us at hello at armoroftruth.net and let us know. I mean, what a blessing it is to hear from you. If you need to find a church in your area, email us at hello at armor of truth and i will personally take all the time it requires to find the best three if possible gospel preaching doctrinally sound non-woke pure gospel of jesus christ churches in your area and someone will send that list to you now if you've recently requested our church finder service please just hang in there and extend us the grace of patience please because it takes time to find these churches but I can tell you this much as an encouragement. They are out there. God has preserved his word and he has preserved his church. Mm -hmm.